Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bolt Breakdowns here on the Guilty as Charged podcast YouTube channel. I'm doing a bit of a breaking news update today regarding the Julio Jones news that obviously came out of The Athletic. Uh, it seems that the Falcons are expected to trade Julio Jones or want to trade him at least uh, in the very near future. And the six teams we have heard that are interested in Julio Jones, you know who one of them is, <laughs> um, obviously with the Chargers, but some of the other teams involved in this are the Ravens, 49ers, Patriots, Colts, and Tennessee Titans. Um, so this is where this whole news broke today uh, in the athletic, uh, you know, this is not necessarily like an Adam Schefter. These are the teams in conversation with the Falcons, but it is based on sources that Jeff Schultz has talked to around the league. These are the destinations uh, he feels would make sense. Um, so yeah, obviously we're here to talk about the Chargers uh, and them being in on Julio Jones. So first I wanna talk about what would Julio Jones cost? Um, and that's sort of kind of the interesting thing in this because you're not really trading a player for Julio Jones. That, my first thought was, okay, maybe you trade Mike Williams and also some picks. But to me, it seems like the Falcons are trying to offload cap space. Um, that's obviously been their focus as of late in trying to sign their rookie class. So to me, I think they're just going straight for draft capital. They're all in on this rebuild that they're doing. This was a hypothetical trade PFF came up with. Um, let's ignore the Chiefs part, but basically it was a 2022 second, 2022 third, 2022 sixth. Um, I don't know if Julio would be that steep. I sort of think that the deal would be more like a 2022 second, 2022 third, and then maybe you can, or let's say 2023 third, and then maybe a, a kind of conditional fifth or sixth round pick. Um, I think the big thing with Julio is obviously he's had some more injuries, but you're also paying a team to take on that contract, right? And take that contract off your hands. Um, not that Julio's contract is necessarily a bad one, but I do think you're asking a team to take on three years, 66 million. That's just the reality. Like there is an out for whatever team trades for Julio Jones uh, in the future but uh, around 2023, I think is the potential out, but the next two years are locked in and you're going to be paying Julio uh, his you know, cap hits uh, or his salary also of you know, a combined, uh, let's say about mm, 26 million, but the cap hits are higher, right? Uh, but also you, you know, combine his signing bonuses and everything he's making, you are paying him basically north of 40 million uh, these next two years. So um, I do think you could probably make a trade that looks like Chargers receive Julio Jones, maybe a six or seventh round pick next year in return for 2022 second, probably a 2023 third, and maybe a 2022 fifth or sixth round pick. Um, I think that's a realistic trade, but I also am not totally sold on the fact that they would have to go as high as a second and a third for Julio Jones just based on the nature of his contract. Um, but yeah, let's get into when this would happen. If it does, uh, PFF Brad on Twitter has the numbers, similar to what you've been hearing about with Aaron Rodgers, this June 1st deadline, or not a deadline, but the June 1st date is when a lot of contracts kind of change and get easier to trade. Uh, Pre-June 1st, the Falcons would have 23 million in dead money <laughs> by trading him, would lose 200K in cap space. Uh, after June 1st, there's only 8 million in dead cap space for the Falcons, uh, but they also save $15 million. So this would happen after June 1st, and obviously this news and these reports are coming out uh, about 11 days before. So, you know, you can kind of make heads and tails of what direction this is going in. I don't think Julio Jones will be traded on June 1st that day but I do think we'll hear more rumblings uh, as in those first two weeks of June or so uh, about the potential of trading Julio Jones. Uh, as for his contract, this is pretty much how it breaks down. Uh, 2021 and 2022 are pretty much locked in. You have a $23 million cap hit, you have a $20 million cap hit. Obviously the Chargers have $20 million in cap space. 
Um, so they can absorb this contract for this year. Uh, it's not really uh, as big of a deal as people were making it out to be. Um, you know, the, the thing is they wouldn't have as much rollover next year, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, this is a manageable contract for them to take on. It actually isn't as bad as people are making it out to be. There's also potential out uh, for the Chargers in 2023, where the cap hit is about 20 million and the dead cap is eight, right? So you would be saving 12 million. Obviously you don't want to cut Julio Jones, but if Julio Jones does get to a point where maybe he has a more severe injury, the Chargers do have an out in 2023. Um, so it's worth pointing that out. I think it's important to these conversations that, that we've been having. Um, but yes, yeah, so one thing that I think is important to this whole thing is obviously Mike Williams, um, because if you are re-signing Mike Williams, it doesn't really make sense to pursue a Julio Jones trade because then you're paying uh, Mike Williams north of 10 million, you're paying Keenan 20 plus million, and you're paying Julio Jones 20 plus million. So I don't think the Chargers are going to have the strategy of having 55 to 60 million dollars you know, really jammed in just to their receiver group when there's $200 million of cap space, right? That that just to me isn't very realistic and it doesn't seem very Telesco-esque. If they are thinking of moving on from Mike Williams and that might be what's sort of propping up these discussions, then I think at that point, Julio Jones makes a lot of sense. You keep Mike Williams on for this year, but then let him walk and then your wide receiver core is something like Keenan Allen, uh, Julio Jones, you know, depending on what happens with Jalen Guyton and Tyron Johnson and unrestricted free agency, but you also have Josh Palmer, KJ Reed, Joe Hill, and all of those guys sort of filling out the bottom part uh, of the roster. But that's kind of going to be an interesting thing to watch. Um, I do not think that the Chargers are seriously in these conversations, but I think like a lot of teams around the league, they're perusing and seeing what's out there. Um, but to me, like I said, if you aren't really thinking of re-signing Mike Williams uh, and, and making him a big offer now, then I think that moving on and taking Julio Jones would make a lot of sense. Now, obviously, you can't really trade Mike Williams to the Falcons because the Falcons are trying to offload money this year and also the future. Um, but I think you keep Mike Williams this year and you would also trade for Julio Jones while moving on from Mike Williams in next free agency. Um, that's probably what their deal would be. If they view themselves as a title contending team, I think that would kind of make a lot of sense. Uh, so, you know, we'll kind of see what happens. Now, another part of this, obviously, is how would Keenan feel about this? Uh, I'll, I'll try to find the tweet, but Michael Peterson kind of brought it up on Twitter where, you know, Keenan has been the wide receiver one for all these years, obviously has been putting up the numbers, has been a leader on the team, a vocal leader, you know, how would he feel about Julio Jones coming in here? And, you know, obviously Julio is one of the best receivers in the league. Um, I, I certainly think he's top three, depending on how you want to rank, you know, Devontae Adams and De DeAndre Hopkins. Prior to last year and some of the injuries, I had Julio ranked as my number one receiver. Um, so to me, he is in a special class of guys. He is a bona fide Hall of Famer. And, you know, so he, you know, how does that fit in the locker room? Um, that, I think that's an interesting question with Keenan Allen and his wide receiver one status. But to me, you know, Julio is also so good to the point where I don't know if you worry about that so much. And they also just inked Keenan Allen to a four year, $80 million deal. So I think, you know, maybe he wouldn't be so thrilled about it. But if you are getting rid of Mike Williams in the future anyway, and you have Keenan Allen and Julio Jones, I don't think that either of them are really eating into each other's, you know, targets uh, or catches. So I don't think that'll be too huge of a deal. I also think they're different players, right? To me, Julio eats more into Mike Williams' production uh, as a kind of big jump ball receiver down the field target than he does a, as a Keenan Allen finesse route runner, right? I think Keenan Allen would be more affected by if next free agency, they wanted to go get Devontae Adams, right? I think that would affect somebody like Keenan Allen a lot more um, than I think the Julio Jones signing would. But uh, yeah, I think the Chargers should go for it uh, if you know they really wanna pursue that option. I'm not against trading for Julio Jones. 
uh, as long as they're you know pretty much confident in the fact that they're going to let Mike Williams walk next offseason. I think it makes a lot of sense to bring in Julio Jones as your second wide receiver um, or you know wide receiver one slash wide receiver two kind of weird dynamic with Keenan Allen. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'll be reading and responding to all of you guys. Uh, but yeah, as, as always, bolt up and I'll see you guys next time.